started. This is the August 6th Open Research Institute FPGA meetup, and we'll talk today uh, about status on the various projects. Uh, and so we'll just go ahead and get started with that. So, uh, Ken, do you want to kick off uh, the meeting? Yeah, um, not a whole lot to report. I uh, worked to try and get this, uh, Paul, Paul set up a uh, a newer version of, of uh, Ubuntu to see if that was the uh, the cause of our of our script interactions uh, having trouble. We had to work through quite a few issues to to get that up, but it, it came up. But then I ran into um, I don't know if I can I can share it in chat here. Let's see. This is the last. Uh, message that that we had it's it's basically there's there's still is like a scripting i don't know if I, I installed three packages on that machine and it's still giving me these errors so kind of stuck here on on this uh on this road so I, i'm going to go back and try and Try, I guess, probably try and re resurrect the 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 Peta Linux flow, because this no OS approach has not been working. I I I also said last week I was gonna, I haven't had a chance to do that, but go back into the lab and see if we can like rebuild from the ground up the the whole FPGA uh, card setup because it seems like the the fundamental error before before we got to this before we tried to switch to a newer version it seemed to be a clock related um error uh as it was initializing and uh that's that's about it yeah i haven't have more too much on this but uh got, got through at least this path to kind of <laughs> get to this state anyway so not sure what, where to take this so i'm, I'm going to try and circle back okay any anything else related to the project? No, that that's about it for for now. Okay, thank you very much, Paul. Do you want to? Um, I don't know if you'd seen these errors. If you had any comments on them, or if you and you want to get if you want to give us an update on remote labs, if anything there is of note. I have seen the errors, and I looked at them, and. My eyes crossed and I stopped looking at them. <laughs> I did not have any uh, great insights to offer. I, maybe I could look at them again and and learn a little bit more. I don't know. I'm right now preparing for the DEF CON expedition, which I'll be on and helping out at the booth there. So might not be much progress from me for the rest of the week. All right. Well, have a good time there. That sounds like fun. I'm sorry I'm going to miss it. Hope, hope to. Yeah. Remote Lab is status quo as far as I know. Okay, very good. Anything else you wanted to discuss? No. All right, thank you. Um, I'll just give a quick update from my perspective on uh, Opulent Voice. We've been making, I think, really good progress this week. Um, one of the members in the, um, in the Slack channel, uh, and just looking back to see is call sign um so sorry about that k uh ki5 bab ki5 bravo alpha bravo he's able to get the uh opulent voice running uh in in an internal loopback as well as an rf loopback on the on the uh, pluto sdr he's not using the iio live but rather he's using a, a library called um Open, well, I have it here. Open CPI. And um, so he has it running with a two and a half megahertz uh, sample rate. Um, we And initially the NCO values were wrong. I gave him updated NCO values and uh, he's posted a nice looking spectral output from the Pluto device um, in the Slack channel. So that was exciting. Um, and since then, he's, he's not been able to duplicate that effort, um, but I'm sure he'll he'll get there. As far as um, 
our efforts uh, with using the IIO approach. Um, Everest has, has made uh, excellent progress in, in making a, providing an MQTT interface to the registers, as well as um, you know, getting a, a being able to add scripts and and various uh, things to the overlay for the firmware, firmware builds, and so we're, I think we're able to build firmware, uh, you know, consistently. Um, and in terms of operation, I've been working looking at digital loopback, um, and trying to understand what what's happening a little bit more closely. I think the PI controller gains uh, aren't quite right, but um, you know, so I'm still looking at it. We're not quite there, but hope, hopefully we'll be there soon. And then I also um, provided some simulation plots uh, for um, uh, ZL3JSR, uh, that is, um, sorry, I'm just looking for his name, uh, just so I didn't get it wrong. I'm not seeing it here. Anyways, uh, so he's been looking at and doing analysis of the Costas loops and um, and so uh, we don't have a lock status for the Costas loops yet. So I asked him, or I provided the, the, the simulation plot so we could see kind of what the uh, accumulator signal looks like when it's in a unlocked state versus a, a good state. So that's there. Um, trying to remember if there was anything else of note. Well, if there is, I'll, I'll if I remember it, I'll, I'll come back to it. So with that, um, I'll turn the floor over to Everest and, and Everest, if you could give us an update from things from your point of view and, and um, if you need anything uh, or whatever, whatever you wanna discuss, um, please, you have the floor. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Okay, thank you, Matthew, for the review. Um, yeah, I saw the uh, the rate uh, on Slack uh, written from uh, Kai Five EAB. Um, I don't have any clue of how he um, six well how he he, he work exactly. Um, you, you mentioned open open CPI, but um, is it is he uh, using the firmware and another um, API? Uh, I don't know exactly. Um, my main purpose now is well, uh, yeah, having some MQTT register. I, I begin to uh, to have some uh, 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 less raw register, but uh, more easily to uh, to read. Um, and after that, my goal is to have the RF out spectrum and see if I can receive with another SDR. Right now, I don't have anything. And uh, I try to see some uh, register status, which is weird. The, the, the last message on Slack is seen that um, there is um, a, um, Eric enable, but uh, it doesn't work. It doesn't change if I use I/O enable and disable, and the takes seems the same. So I don't know how to uh, move forward with that. So uh, back to you, uh, Matthew. Okay. Well, I, I thank you for the update, and um, yeah, we can continue to work on Slack to to make some progress here. So there was, I think, I didn't make it clear, although it's in the updated register map on the on GitHub and the Dev, Dev RDL branch, I added two new uh, NCO registers. So the idea is, um, in, in some updates I did this week, I put in a sample discard block that will discard um, some number of samples. Um, since we're at a very high sample rate, we're extremely high oversampled. Uh, you know, in this test case that we're running, which has an IF of about 1.1 megahertz, and but we're sampling at 64.44 megahertz. And so the um, ZL3JSR's uh, analysis indicated that that high oversampling might 
contribute to some loop instability or finding, you know, good loop gains. So uh, the idea was if we discard a bunch of samples, you know, we're effectively reducing the sample rate, then, um, you know, we might get better luck with, with finding good loop gains. Uh, and that's in part from also from uh, KI5 BAB's um, work that he was, he had the, the working system with um, a two and a half megahertz sample rate. So that that work seems to work fine in simulation with those updates, but I did have to add two new registers. So we have dedicated uh, modulator NCO registers and new dedicated uh, receiver NCO registers because it, it, the receiver, the demodulator right now being at an effectively lower sample rate, um, needed the NCO values are different. So that that's there, and and so I apologize for the confusion that I didn't mention that in the Slack sooner, um, but I, I think you know things are are progressing. The the thing I noticed in the not just the latest build, but the one prior is that one of the PI registers, the accumulators, gets stuck, and it seems like some gains uh, values it 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 is unstuck and and moves around, and then with other gain values it it doesn't change at all, which is um, certainly not expected. They should both be changing uh, constantly. Um, so the F2 is frequencies, Costas loop is basically stuck. The F1 is moving around as I'd expect and, and uh, with certain loop gains actually looks really good. Um, so I'm not sure what's happening with F2. It, again, it works great in simulation. So um, something that's happening. So hopefully we can work through and, and figure out what the issue there is. Um, so, have Reese, anything else you wanted to bring up? Well, I, uh, I think that, uh, uh, well, I, I reduced the, the sample rate also on the on the DAC, um, but uh, I don't have any RF output right now. Um, so, I wonder if there is any description of uh, how BAB uh, has succeeded in uh, having some RF output. Um, have you uh, discussed directly with him, or is there a description of how he, he use it? I, I see there is a, a distinction, but but no detail on the how we uh, uh, what what is his test bench. Yeah, um, I haven't discussed it deeply with him. I, I'm I've been tempted. I should ask him if he can provide more detail. A couple of things that I've gathered is that um, with the open CPI that he's using, he's using, I, I think he already has an environment in which he can put um, other modules into the Pluto that he has pretty well uh, working. And he said he's not using the Pluto MSK top. So he's not using the top level. He's uh, somehow, or, you know, I don't know if he's written a new top level or exactly what he's done, but he's not using the top level as it exists. And he's not using the PRBS uh, module that, that's in the top level. So he has another PRBS module in his in his build that is he's using. Um, so I, I think my impression is that, that he had something that was working already for something else and was able to incl uh, include the MSK modulator demodulator into that and have it work uh, we did have some discussion about real versus complex values he was concerned about the negative frequencies um, and I, I tried to explain to him that you know any real valued signal will have um, be mirrored in the negative frequency domain hopefully I think he understands that now but I'm not entirely sure so he, I mean but he was concerned about that and he he thought that the main lobe should be centered and I did explain to him that it's um, effectively an IF, um, and that's why the main lobe is, is about 1.1 megahertz. And so I think he he understood that. So you know, overall, I mean, it's excellent progress, and it'd be nice if we could we could duplicate it. Um, and you know, clearly he's not using the you know, from my understanding, not using the II lab in the ADI environment. So I, I poked at the Open CPI uh, website a little bit, but I haven't dug into it enough. Um, to see if they have something that's maybe ready-made for for Pluto or not. But anyways, it's still exciting to see the RF spectrum. Yeah, okay, I understand. 
uh, as uh, you told, is uh, may, uh, mainly uh, reuse uh, some blocks, but not uh, the, the top one and the firmware one. So he maybe used directly uh, GTAG uh, programming on the SPGA or something like that. Um, my main uh, goal right now should be to have a TIX, uh, well, to, uh, mm, uh, I know that you work a lot on the Eric's spot and um, that's, very, <clears throat> that's very good. Um, I, I can try first to uh, uh, validate the TIX and the MA, which means that um, what can what can I do or can you uh, give me a script on the register just to uh, take uh, with the PRBS, for example, and then uh, trying to have a NREF output out of the Pluto. Uh, all the uh, setting of sample rate on the IO is OK for me, uh, but just uh, if you can um, Mm, yeah, uh, what what I have to uh, uh, what register need uh, to be set? I guess that uh, the the maybe the NCO for the takes and maybe the uh, the the two frequency for the FSK and uh, for the controller. So not a loop back and uh, and PTT on. I think it's what I need. Yeah, um, I, 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 so I can't really comment on any of the um, interpolator or ADC or I mean DAC and 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 eighty ninety three sixty three configurations. I haven't really dug into those yet, but I, I could certainly, um, you know, even even as the modem is working today in in digital loopback, it. it the data is still sent to the to the DAC interface. So, you know, the configuration that's there at this moment should still provide a useful DAC output. The, but it is, I think, um, in IF. So presumably in the eighty ninety three sixty three that we need to set um, an LO frequency to mix that up to some something that makes maybe makes more sense or or. Yeah, I don't know, just for playing with it, like something like 10 megahertz or even 100 megahertz, whatever makes sense um, for the 80-93-63 output. But so, I mean, like I said, as it's configured, we should still be able to see RF output. But I, I will, um, I can detail a little bit more um, the configuration for an R, uh, RF output. Is that what you were asking? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, what is what wasn't clear was that uh, when you are in loopback, that you still send to uh, the DMA, which means that I can have even you uh, get the loopback inside the top, uh, you send the sample to uh, to the AD ninety three. So it's okay for me. I think that uh, well. I try to uh, send it through I.O. and have uh, some timeout, but maybe it is because the init is at uh, one or something like that, which means that uh, the, 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 the block is uh, still on reset. And maybe that's, that's it. So uh, I, I will try to, uh, to do that and ask you on Slack if uh, I have some, uh, some issue. Okay, great. But thank you for for the details, and uh, I think that we uh, we make some good progress uh, right now. Yeah, I I, I agree. I'm, I'm excited. I think we're very close to you know having the modem working very well, and then work and then working through the RF path and the DMA paths. Um, so I and those can that, that those efforts can start already, even without the modem being fully fully working. We can still make progress in those other paths. So we have multiple things to do, and um, and the progress has been excellent. I think. All right. Okay, and, and let me know if you have uh, if you need any tools on MQTT or uh, some register like uh, well some some tools I can uh, I can bring 
on the firmware, which can uh, help you to debug uh, the Eric part. Uh, now, now there is the thing integer. So it, the, 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 the graphical is uh, easier to, uh, to interpret. But if you have any other requests, let me know. I, I will, thank you. I, I have a couple ideas. I mean, for instance, like if we could, in the DMA interface, bring out the um, PI controller loop gains, that might be really interesting to stream those into the DMA as well so that we're not just kind of undersampling them by reading the register. Um, yeah, that was one thought that that maybe we could do, but you know, let's let's you know, I'm not sure that that it's necessary yet at this point. But th th those kinds of ideas, I think, could potentially be helpful to give us more visibility into the design and what's happening in the FPGA. Okay, great. All right, um, Rick. I apologize. I don't know how long you were waiting, but uh, you're in, and we've been going over the. Uh, status for the various projects, uh, Opulent Voice, the remote labs, and, and then uh, what Ken's been working on. So um, if you have any comments or any questions, uh, you have the floor. No, it's, uh, I'm just looking to see how, how much progress you're making. Uh, sounds pretty good. I've got a couple of Plutos waiting here to load some code on you. All right. Well, the, yeah, Everest has done a fine job of of making a you know repeatable firmware build. So we just have a little bit more work to do to get the modem stable, but um, we're coming along. Yeah, my main project is the picture behind you or behind me. I went, yeah. went and got that tower last week, and I think I hurt myself doing it. So I'm recovering a little before unloading it from the trailer. <laughs> well, it looks like a fun project. So oh, hope, yeah. Well, well you've got to have a little regular old ham radio, you know, to keep you going. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, thank you. So um, I'll just ask if there's anybody else that wants to make any comments or questions before we wrap up. All right. Well, I thank you, everybody, for attending. And I appreciate it and and I uh, do wish uh, Paul and, and Michelle well as they travel up to uh, Las Vegas for DEF CON and we'll be excited to hear how that goes. So with that, um, thank you everybody. And uh, this will be a wrap for uh, August 6th uh, FPGA meetup. Thank you all.